tentpole PS5 exclusives continue to land on PC, with the second of Guerrilla's games now bringing Aloy and team along for the ride. Guerrilla Games are one of the technical pillars within PlayStation Worldwide Studios, and Horizon Forbidden West is an exemplar of the benefits of single platform development. In the PC platform, we can scale well below the PS4 and up above the PS5 with Nvidia's RTX 4090. Do we have more than our head in the clouds with Horizon Forbidden West? <laughs> Horizon Forbidden West is one of the best looking games on consoles, period. And with this Nixie's delivered port, that statement now includes the PC. From the dreamlike Nubus Voxel Cloud system, best enjoyed in the included Burning Shores DLC with their dynamic, volumetric and physically based construction that covers the world. One packed with incredible character rendering, physically based materials, deep oceans, dense, vibrant and lush flora and forests as you hide under thickets, climb vines, towers and mechanical beasts, it constantly impresses. Scale, volume, colour and organic are four key areas that describe this world. Another is choice. Although a cross-generation game, the PlayStation 5 is where it pushes the fidelity needle most and thus forms the main console comparison. This PC port loses none of the quality and, depending on the machine, can even exceed it. From stratospheric heights in visuals to one big and welcome improvement. Nixes have added real-time rendering options via a transparent menu, a genius touch really aiding the configuration and PC market desire to fiddle, offering immediate and, most importantly, visual changes to the game's rendering. Top-end RTX 4090, however, can max all the sliders at native 4K. These choices, however, miss out on the best features and use of the hardware. The game ships with Gorilla's own TAA, but is complemented with all flavors of reconstructed image options. DLSS 3, FSR 2.2, and Intel's XESS are all available to upscale the image back to your target output. Comparing the PC's best to the PS5's best, we can see very minor increases. Texture filtering can be pushed higher to 16 times, with PS5 hovering between 4 and 8 depending on the texture in question, along with very high shadows offering better filtering than PS5 in its fidelity mode, along with more objects in the shadow cascade. And this was confirmed with our chat with Nixis directly, which you can read over on the IGN.com article. In addition, depth of field can run cinematic quality during gameplay and level of detail can see minuscule increases with slightly less imposter sprites used. The most obvious leaps come in extended field of view which can see approximately 5% increase in performance on some machines and then ultra wide options which can also include real time cinematics. The boosts over PS5 are frugal but welcome, however we do have more. Image quality is next, and DLSS can offer improvements over the engine's own TAA at 4K. The vast amount of subpixel foliage and thin edges of geometry can cause flicker and movement on PC. The PS5, in its 4K TAA fidelity mode, is better than the PC setting here. Some of that comes down to the extra sample taps and output options console offers over PC drivers and APIs, but also the changes in textures and foliage which is subtly tweaked on PS5 and PS4. You can see this on the zoomed in shots. Bloom and volumetrics are also slightly reduced over the fidelity mode, but are more subtle in comparison. DLSS quality mode improves on this with stability and sharpness marginally better than the PS5's 4K mode, aside things like depth of feel which can flicker slightly more. Texture details and high frequency elements are close, but DLSS is slightly better. Not all aspects are improved though, with DLSS's screen space reflections now uses lower samples causing blockier quality and resemble macro blocking on a video stream. As we move into the lower resolution performance mode on PS5, which also uses a checkerboard resolve, you can see these lower pixel based counts cause similar issues and now the RTX 4090 offers superior image quality and performance in its 4K DLSS quality mode. 
FSR 2.2 and XESS deliver good results, but both suffer in the foliage heavy world and voxel clouds over DLSS and PS5 in its fidelity mode and even in its performance one. Out of the two, XESS is slightly better than FSR 2 in reducing the fizzle and pixel popping that happens when occluded pixels are disoccluded as things move, such as Aloy running, you can see the increased ghosting flicker around her arms, hair and such compared to other solutions in the zoomed in sections. Sharpness of image and small or distant objects also lose some of the clarity of the PS5 and DLSS quality modes, but in general, they deliver similar image quality for significantly increased performance targets. Post the game's launch, both Nvidia's DLSS and Intel's XESS have been updated to 3.7 and 1.3 respectively, which can be simply swapped within the relevant DLLs that the game engine hooks into at runtime. We can see both trade the sharpness of image for a slightly more stable one. Now we have subtly less fizzle under motion on both, but DLSS still improves over XESS with more texture detail retained with less dithered elements as you can see in these zoomed in sections on Aloy's hair, hands and distant textures. Although better on sub-pixel shimmer such as grass and leaves, it is a minor but welcome boost on both nonetheless. At the other end, DLSS Ultra Performance remains far too unstable and due to the high frequency elements abundant in the game, is a choice only used for those desperate to lock at a target performance rate at the expense of image stability, clarity and quality. The game scales well within reason. The RTX 4050 can offer superior image quality, effects and performance to the PS4 via my optimized settings using that same DLSS auto mode at 1080p. We have increased foliage, shadow quality, textures and other small areas which are obvious in comparisons. Below this is the Valve handheld. Again, using my optimized settings, we can target 30 FPS with a DRS TAA based 900p on large screens, as you see here, or 800p on the device screen itself. Using these comparisons, you can see that the Steam Deck loses out on depth of field, texture details, hair, screen space reflections, lighting, and other aspects over PS4 and the RTX 4050 here. It still delivers the lion's share of the game's quality, but you must use TAA and not FSR2, as that ruins the image when moving, although it does a good job when stationary. However, that isn't how games are meant to be played. That means in your hands or on a big screen, TAA is better. Even then though, the low base resolution and aggressive streaming stutters and dips that come can be obvious and obtrusive, making it hard to recommend in its current form. Wrapping up the settings section is my optimized settings guide for the Steam Deck targeting 30 FPS and the RTX 4050 or thereabouts targeting 1080p 60 you can see on screen. An important aspect is that 8 gigabyte or lower GPUs need to target 1440p resolutions or medium textures as high and very high can have big performance penalties during play. We managed to speak with Nixis directly after putting this review together and I asked what challenges and changes the PC memory setup raised for them. Principal optimization programmer Mikhail Roiser offered an insight into the specific features the PS5 offers and how the team had to adapt this on PC, which results in larger memory requirements over the console version for the same results. This confirms the issue we can see on the weaker hardware at times, such as the Steam Deck and that 6 GB RTX 4050, as the buffers can be pulled back and forth as required when moving through the world. Reducing memory demands helps greatly here when VRAM limited. The team confirmed they're still working on aspects to reduce pressure when streaming is highest, which is understandable for such a high fidelity and detailed world. If you have the RTX 4090 though, you can just whack it up to max and enjoy the show. All the reconstruction solutions offer increases over an equal native output. Nvidia's solution remains the best across the board though, and at the same 4K target on my RTX 1490 in the best quality mode, a base 2560 by 1440 render, it can boost performance approximately 22% to 122 FPS over the native 4K TAA's 100 FPS. 
Perfect for those that have a 120 FPS screen and want to maintain the 4K pristine quality. 4K DLSS Ultra Performance can net us 35% over native, but the hit to image quality is high here, which is where DLSS frame generation comes into play. With it enabled, we can now run the game at a perceived 150 FPS, with image quality that is slightly better in some areas than DLSS quality due to the extra taps it makes via the interpolated frames. It can suffer more with fizzle and ghost artifacts whenever new objects or pixels appear between rendered frames and this materializes as flicker blocky outlines but input latency is higher due to the buffered rendering this mode requires the dlss auto dynamic resolution scaling mode costs over six percent over native 4k taa which highlights the calculation has a cost all of its own and only use this with the appropriate frame rate target set <laughs> Don't want those things to call in some friends from underground. Pitting the PS5 against the RTX 4090 in their respective best modes, Balance Mode is a match for Fidelity Mode requiring a 120Hz screen on PlayStation 5. The 4K DLSS quality at maximum settings on the RTX 4090 is unsurprisingly a win for the NVIDIA GPU, with it delivering almost three times the performance rate of the 4K PS5 Balance Mode here. In like for like combat and exploration, we can see an average readout over 100 FPS on PC here versus a close lock on that 40 FPS or 25 millisecond target on PS5. PC can stutter occasionally at times, sometimes streaming or GPU impacts during combat or cutscenes, but both run consistent frame times with this PC having minimal stutter and judder, which is helped with Nix's PSO pre-compilation pass at first boot or driver swap. Offering console-like consistency right from your first play highlights the quality of Nix's efforts to better suit the PC architecture. The PS5 performance mode runs in the 60s and 70s, but this unlocked performance mode requires a VRR screen. The RTX 4090 can exceed PS5 in all of its modes, but this is not the case for the full PC market. Gotcha. Mine's down too. More of those machines ahead. Nothing you and I can't handle. On the RTX 4050 gaming machine, it represents a good section of the PC market. Using my optimized settings, we can hit 60 FPS in addition to superior settings, image quality, and performance to the PS4 version. The PS4 delivers a good run at 30 FPS with it often hitting the required frame times throughout, but it can dip in some of the heavier sections and become memory bound at times. The RTX 4050 is not a fully locked 60 FPS, but it does achieve the required 16 millisecond frame times over 80% of the time, and this results in a much smoother and refined gameplay experience than the last generation consoles, though it can still dip in heavier bandwidth areas and real-time cutscenes. In addition though, for the cost of additional latency, DLSS 3 frame generation can be used to get the game at a perceived 80 to 95 FPS, which can help fluidity on a 120Hz VRR capable screen. It also benefits, as all PCs do, with superior loading times over the PS4 due to faster drives and CPUs, with the PS5 coming out on top in the loading stakes just over my 5800X 3D CPU. This is as expected though, as on PC, it has to do a far larger amount of work during loading due to the different architecture and lack of dedicated hardware decompression the PS5 offers, as principal lead programmer Patrick Dalbecker explains. In addition, I noticed a few areas of textures and Aloy's hair that were not quite as good as they are on the PS5 and a few bugs with enemies clipping through floors during combat, such as a big snake battle. Although very minor, a few updates are still likely on the way from the team for all levels of PC hardware. Nice. 
The Steam Deck is the weakest of the bunch, with it struggling in battles to keep even a limp grip on the required 33 millisecond frame times, possibly bandwidth bound at times, even at low settings. That said, it can run slightly above the PS4 in some tested sections and real-time cutscenes, but this is often short-lived or soon followed by bouts under the PS4 level. All things considered, it does well running a console exclusive of this quality on mobile hardware under 16 watts, now this may help having a PS5 version with the relevant asset texture and geometry tweaks applied to aid its performance target, which again, Nix's answered directly in our interview on the balance and benefits of using the PS5 version as the base. Now this does help the RTX 4050 level greatly and even the Steam Deck can achieve a decent 30 FPS level. You can often see GPU utilization dipping from those noted streaming and memory tasks causing some stutter throughout play. Now along with image quality impacts due to DSR kicking in, this can cause enough of an issue for me to not recommend you buy it to play on the Steam Deck in its current form at least. Nixies have delivered another high quality tailored port to PC on the back of Gorilla's exquisite PlayStation 5 version. The current PlayStation console offered a good selection of choice with VRR players having the widest. The PC port loses none of that with pristine image quality, performance fidelity and scalability. Running this visual quality from the Steam Deck, issues notwithstanding, and through the PC stack is testament to that effort. Adapting their own rewritten memory management system to improve performance across the varied PC hardware limitations and split memory pools, but also making changes to texture management, compression, and even GPU and CPU decompression to maximize PC strengths demonstrates this is no quick port. Although not a leap over PlayStation 5, it does offer better texture quality, small level of detail increases, and vastly superior performance options if you have the hardware, whilst reinforcing just how good that base PS5 version is. Reimagined it may not be, but it remains a showcase in high fidelity rendering quality for console and PC alike. Machines are causing the trouble. Nasty ones and lots of them. Bristlebacks, they're called. That's it from the deep dive into game technology, PC comparisons, and all things video game related. Remember, if you like what we do here on IGN, then keep it IGN performance reviews, and we'll catch you on the next one. <laughs> Just the hammer, just the fight.